there was feedback in here, but maybe that's okay. Um, you know, our leader, the wild man, isn't here yet, but that might give Slava time to take a phone call if he needs to. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's okay. If John doesn't show up, then we're running around here just some kind of anarchy. But anyway, but let me let me let me just start here with a simple question of how you got together with Slava, how you found him, and how you suggested for this film. How you started it? Yeah, so I, I, my parents are from the former Soviet Union, from Ukraine, and, and I played hockey very competitively growing up, and, and you know, wanted to be a professional player. And um, you know, when I was a kid, I, I had a, a coach, coincidentally, in Chicago, who was the first in, from the former Soviet Union to coach in the United States, and he really kind of changed the way I understood hockey and sport, and and opened my eyes to a whole new way of thinking about it. He was. You know, the training was was very unorthodox and and um, unusual, but also very you know fun and, and tedious, but interesting. And, and he encouraged creativity, something that wasn't really uh, done in the United States. And he, he encouraged kind of playing as a as a unit together, kind of each line as a unit. And, and this really kind of inspired me. And then I wondered. And then I, I got my hands on a, on a VHS tape of. Uh, the Soviet Union playing hockey in 1987, and, and I was literally, uh, I, I was spellbound, and I was also confused at the same time. I was spellbound because, you know, I, I felt that it was a profound expression of creativity, what they were doing on the ice. It was magical. It was something I'd never seen before. It was like almost a religious experience for me at the time, um, that kind of creativity. And, and I hadn't seen that. I was a little confused because I didn't know why hockey wasn't played like that in the United States or North America I, because it was so beautiful. Why, why weren't we doing this, you know, playing that way as well? So, you know, that, that caused me to kind of get really curious about it. When, we came, when I became a filmmaker, you know, I looked into this story of the, of the Soviet hockey team and I found that it was a much bigger story than just the, the hockey team. It was a story of, of the Soviet Union, the people. You know, it was a story about... Uh, Deep friendship and betrayal. It was a story about Russia and Russians and their relationship with the United with the United States and North America before and after the Cold War. It was simply hockey was simply a window into a much larger story. So that's kind of what how this whole thing started. And, and I, I actually want to jump ahead a little. And I don't know if if Slava can speak to this because you, you're back in Russia now. And maybe you can too. But. Um, I love that with the Red Wings, when they saw what real, they really needed was a team of you to play the style, this creative style that you talk about. And has, has the NHL learned from that? I mean, do you know, are they playing that way now? Or, or if you don't have a team of five Russian hockey players, forget it. It's just the same old thing. First of all, it's a big honor for me to be here. Thank you for your well, welcome. Last night I get here, it's, uh, I didn't expect to be so much people, but thanks a lot. Uh, uh, he was a, he's a good boy. You know. he's, a, he's a mom here. You know, she, she did a good job to, to raise him in a, in a proper way. He's lucky not to beat me in ice, you know, when I was in a good shape. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, when we play, it's uh, almost every year against uh, NHL teams in a different capacity, against uh, NHL clubs, against national teams, and 70% uh, of the game we beat uh, North American uh, hockey players. And I think when uh, I opened the gate for the not only hockey players from the Soviet Union, I think it's uh, after this, it's all uh, uh, European uh, big stars uh, came here, get drafted, and I think it's NHL style right now. It's a mix of the uh, North American hockey and uh, European. It brought more, more uh, intelligence to the game. It's more uh, played together for the big result. And I uh, got great experience to, to play in college team here. And uh, <coughs> uh, in the same room, Get guys from different nationalities, different uh, uh, religion, uh, different you know, it's, uh, educational background. They sit in the same room and fight for the uh, big things to win the Stanley Cup. And uh, the 
Throw the blood on ice and be good friends after, you know, go drink big beer and, you know, <laughs> talk about different stories and, you know, it's, uh, I mean, probably it was the best uh, time in my life, you know, it's, uh, to, to feel this international uh, 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 friendship. And especially nowadays when they work so fragile, you know, and, and politicians, maybe not, uh, uh, sometimes they like, doing what they're supposed to do, but the, the sport teams, especially hockey, can show it. We can live together, fight for the ultimate goal, and you know, it's uh, lots of fun. I mean, it's... Uh, and... Uh, and so, yes, you know, it's uh, hockey uh, now is different than it was, you know, 20 years ago. And I enjoy every time to watch the, you know, it's competition, Olympic level, and we best play against best, and uh, get the goosebumps, and I can try to see myself in this situation and I think it's a, a game, it's now, it's a, probably it's a number one uh, team sport and uh, uh, thank for support, I mean, it's, uh, it was a great experience. One thing that I can say about you know, watching the NHL hockey game now is I try and uh, show my girlfriend the Stanley Cup Finals this year because I wanted to, you know, teach her a little bit about hockey, she doesn't really know anything. and. You know, when I turned it on, I, I, you know, I kept wanting it to be like uh, the games that I used to watch on v the VHS tape in 1987, and and it, because they were making beautiful plays almost every play that, that they touched the puck, they did something really special with it. And I think nowadays you see with the NHL games, it's maybe you know one or two good plays an entire game, which uh, you know I think is, is that's the major difference. Life is more practical right now. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wildman, hi. Hi, question. Sorry, Mr. Wildman. Way on the other side. Waiting for the mic to get to the other side of the room. There you go. Hello. Um, born in Detroit, raised in Flint, so thank you, thank you, thank you for the Stanley Cups that you provided uh, for um, A question for you as now sort of a sports minister and the breakup of the Soviet Union. During that era, you know, you had essentially 15 now nations to draw from to put together the best hockey team for what was then the Soviet Union, now focusing solely on Russia. How has the demographic change of the country in that way impacted your ability to field the, the best team and, and uh, create the best team for Russia? You know, I got the uh, best time in uh, my hockey career in Detroit, and thanks for support. And never forget, uh, 1.5 million uh, people on the street uh, for the Stanley Cup parade. This is the uh, things you never forget when you see the sign. I'm going to name all my children, yes, it's laughing, it's just <laughs> very challenging. <laughs> uh, still in Russia, you've got 120 nationalities living in uh, and, uh, and peace. It's uh, uh, all kind of religion they represent. Uh, the most religion country, you know, it's an, uh, uh, always, you know, it's a hockey team or uh, any other teams was uh, selected from different parts of the United you know, uh, uh, country. Uh, it's very funny, but uh, when they play, it's was only 30 indoor skating rings in the Soviet Union. And they all located in the European part of the Russia. Uh, one team was in, in uh, Riga, it's Baltic States, another was in Kiev, but the rest of it, uh, you know, it's uh, one hour flight to the sea. When I was Minister of Sport from 2002 until 2008, we built 300 indoor skating rinks in the country. Now we got uh, uh, select the kids from all over the uh, place, from Moscow to Vladivostok. I mean, it's uh, but another uh, uh, challenge for us now to make sure that all the kids who play in different parts of the uh, huge country you know, can get uh, attention and uh, never get going to be lost for the big hockey, this is the uh, 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 big challenge right now, but uh, again, it's, uh, they, they play, they, you know, it's, uh, uh, they get Ukrainian background, they get Russian, you know, they, they from Chechen Republic, they, they, uh, the hockey players who built the arena five years ago, and uh, they stayed a lot of, I mean, it's, I know it's a sport in our, in our country, you know, from the, you know, it's, uh, 
Uh, to make the, you know, it's a uh, big athletes, you know, it's a uh, sport, it's a social phenomenon. It's only an alternative for the street uh, challenges, it's only a way to bring the kids from internet back to the ground, <laughs> to make them uh, be champion, not in the internet, just to, to skate and uh, compete. <laughs> and it's the only way to teach them uh, uh, quality, they need to be uh, good citizens and uh, successful people. I mean, it's. Uh, I'm proud and I'm part of the, the system who improved the uh, 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 infrastructure. We built and built and built a uh, new facility for the kids. And, uh, and I think it was uh, 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 my job you know, for almost seven years uh, to make the sport as a, a, a very important uh, government responsibility. We still love hiking, it's number one sport, and uh, uh, I hope some, some kids can uh, wear the Tread Red Wings uniform and uh, bring the another cup for you. Okay. Hi, uh, Dean Treadway, Moon Peach United. Uh, I uh, was extremely moved by this week. I don't know anything about hockey, really, except I know that it's the most entertaining game to watch. And watching you play, uh, and with your cohorts, is just something that I've never really experienced before. It does, and it's really so. That said, um, I love the relationship between <laughs> you and Gabe that that you include in the film, in in the beginning, and resolving it in the end. And I also love how you use uh, you use sort of mistakes that happen, like with the KGB agent and, and so forth. How do you feel like using that kind of unusual footage uh, enlivens the film? And also, Slava, do you do you yourself still do you dream have dreams of playing with your four cohorts? Wait. Uh, first of all, uh, I, when I tried to bring somebody on skates, you know, it's a put governors on a skate. I know if, if you put the one of the governor on a skate, give him a stick, I know for sure you're going to build the new arena for the kids. You know. And I tell them, you know, when they, they begin, I said, they, they teach me how to play this game. Anybody can play. If you want to play, we can skate. In, uh, in the Central Park, I, I skate last, last year. It was uh, lots of fun. Uh, of course, uh, um, I was lucky to get uh, uh, a chance to associate with the game, you know. Uh, uh, make me, you know to make me famous and bring me here to, to, to uh, speak in front of you. And uh, of course, it's, you know, it's, uh, uh, this is the world, it's, uh, uh, you need to be talented, you, you need to put uh, priority in your life, you know, how to you know, fight through and stuff like that. And again, it's, uh, you know, if you get the uh, uh, question right, you know, if, uh, uh, you love the game and it doesn't matter what part of the world you are uh, in. It can be a hockey player or a football player or a baseball player. You know, it's, uh, most of the time it uh, doesn't care what kind of political system in your country. You get in a situation, you love the game, you want to be the, 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 the number one, you want to be a, a champion. But um, until a certain you know, it's a degree when you, know, it's, you start to realize uh, how big the uh, price you pay for this. But it's happened late, but as uh, soon as you get in a situation, you, you've got teammates around you, and you're 20 years old, and you become the number one uh, five-man unit in the country, you know, and all uh, uh, people uh, in the Soviet Union support you, you know, that's a big challenge, you know. Of course, you, you need to get uh, good support from each other. And, uh, we live 11 months in a dormitory, you know. Uh, we train maybe four times a day, just, you know, it's uh, to be better. And uh, always ask me, do you play against U.S. because it was political order? I said, no. And for us, it doesn't matter, you know, you play against Sweden, Czechs, or uh, Canadians. 
He only beat him in a certain game, you know, he wants to be the champion. And uh, uh, I was lucky to play 23 seasons. I was very lucky to get known National Hockey League. I think it's the, the, the best uh, prototype of the, uh, uh, how things can be good for the players, for the people, for the country, for lots of stuff. And, uh, of course, it's, uh, for me, it's a big learning experience, and of course, I'm still uh, lucky and proud to be part of the, the story you just uh, saw on the screen. Mm -hmm. If Gary in the back? Well, but there's, there's another question about Gabe and what you call mis mistakes, but actually I call yes. wonderfully light touches and things. Talk about how you, you know, what you incorporate into the film. Yeah, I mean, I tell the story. When, you know, as a filmmaker, you just look for ways to, to, to tell your story as, as effectively as possible. And, you know, sometimes that means, you know, finding footage that, you know, you, you wouldn't expect you would put in there in order to kind of bring out the character as kind of you saw in the movie. Some of it was sort of a happy accident. For instance, the KGB and his daughter, it wasn't actually his daughter, it was a girl that literally interrupted the, the shoot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it wasn't a mistake, right. <laughs> and as soon as it happened, you kind of know that it's, that, that is special. I mean, I thought, think, I always think that that scene is like kind of what this movie's about tonally in a way. Um, you know, taking the past and kind of twisting it a little bit, you know. Um, and putting it into context, you know, I, I always found that interesting. But yeah, I mean, with, with with these sort of playful elements, with Slava and I kind of came much later in the in the editing stage. I just I was trying to figure out ways to to really help, help the audience understand who who he was as a person, and and, and you know, craft the story. And, and you just do you just try to find ways to make things interesting. And that's kind of what happened. You tell the story about the mistake you get in the Air Force One to fly into the Soviet Union. Yeah, so I was a uh, big mistake. Yeah. <laughs> so I flew to Russia because I, I needed to interview Slava again. He knew I was coming, and, and you know I showed up there and uh, got acclimatized for a couple of days. And I called him and said, "Hey, I'm, I'm here. I'm ready to go. I got my crew together." And he's, you know, I don't know if I caught him. He woke. He just woke up, but he said, "What do you mean?" What, uh, I can't do it. And I said, Why, what do you mean? I flew all the way out here. We've got to do this. We've got to act here. You know? I spent a lot of money and so on and so forth. So he said, okay, well, let me, let me call you back. Then he calls me and says, listen, I've got to go to Sochi because Putin is, is uh, presenting something there. It's a junior hockey. They're, they're, they're presenting kind of the new rink there and everything. And I said, well, I mean, can I go? Can, I, can we shoot there? And, so he calls me back and says, okay, meet me there, meet me in Sochi. So I was like, okay. So I get on the plane and, and meet him there, and, uh, and you know, we, we, it's a little bit of a longer story, but we end up doing the interview, and, and he said, you know, well, so how are you getting home? And I didn't know at the time, because everything happened so fast. And, and I said, can you uh, give me a ride home somehow? And I didn't know how he was <laughs> somehow getting hooked up. And, and uh, he said, well, I'm, you know, let me... Let me make a call. And so he gets on the phone and it's like on, on the interview too, and he calls somebody. I don't know who. But Nobody's on the phone. He calls this guy and uh, and he's a California boy. Yeah. And uh, he said, "Okay, you're going on Air Force One. <laughs> home with me." But he said. And then when we get there, he said, don't look at anyone or talk to anyone. <laughs> straight to the back of the plane. Don't even speak Russian if, if anyone speaks to you. <laughs> Mistake. <laughs> All right, time for two more questions. We'll start with Gary. Uh, question for either Gary or Slava. Uh, Victor Tikhanov is the obvious villain of the film. But I wonder, since it's also quite clear that political ideology drives the sports system in the Soviet Union at that time. To what extent would another individual have made a difference? Would another individual coach have had any more leeway, or were those diktats being made by either the Soviet Army or the Politburo? The way that they did the harsh practice uh, regimen and so on. What's the question? 
Right, so would another Dikonov? individual other than Viktor Tikhonov made uh, a difference in the, the, that harsh regimen? Would there have been more leeway for him, or would his decisions have been principally being imposed yes, upon him yes. by the Red Army or the Polar I got it. Um, I think it's uh, one of the, the, the main things the gate can. Uh, Make right. It's a uh, certain that somebody built the system. You know, the system was built in, uh, after World War II when the Stalin decided to <coughs> to use the sport as a, uh, a, a political instrument, and he uh, decided uh, to uh, <coughs> appoint uh, his son Vasily to, to run the hockey program. You can believe it? And uh, we started to develop the hockey in 1948. But in 1954, we won the first uh, uh, championship, world championships. In 1956, uh, the uh, first Olympic Games, my first try. I mean, it's uh, the man who built the system, the you know, hockey system was Anatoly Tarasov, and uh, uh, I was lucky to get in the school uh, of the Red Army from the 10 years old and uh, get all this quality, you know, it's uh, from the uh, hockey program he was building. <coughs> Of course, when the Tikhanov came in 1977 to the national team, uh, he said, uh, I, need, uh, uh, I need to uh, also get the Red Army Corps. Uh, the same year the Red Army won the championship. It was my first time. And, uh, and the uh, coaches uh, who coached me, who picked me as a 17 years old to the big team, uh, uh, it was... Uh, People who followed the uh, Tarasov program, they was uh, raised in the same system. And the first time in the history of the Soviet uh, sport, uh, the winning coach was fired because Tikhonov wants to, 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 to get his job. And he was from different systems. The Namets was a uh, KGB run organization, and uh, he's uh, very particular, you know. Uh, uh, but, uh, he was developer. We not uh, uh, his uh, students. We know how to play game. And we learned how to play the game and, uh, from different teachers. And we got enough talent to continue to do what we think is was right. That's why it's quite a bomb and it's self, you know, uh, doesn't know who teach you. I, I don't know how you do it, but uh, ask you not to change anything. I mean, it's uh, again, it's. Uh, uh, that's why I was uh, uh, not sure how the people in, in Russia now are going to receive this field, you know, because uh, for him, it's, uh, for them, it's Tikhon is still legend. You know, he's uh, won the more Olympic uh, gold and championship than anybody. And of course, uh, we are also, you know, it's uh, kind of, you know, it's uh, legends for them and uh, heroes for many, many people. And uh, it was interesting for me how they're going to take this uh, story, you know. But uh, uh, somebody likes Stalin, somebody doesn't like it, you know. Somebody like uh, one of you leaders, somebody doesn't. But uh, again, it's, uh, this is the life. And uh, uh, of course he doesn't want us to leave. Of course he wants to keep us as much as he could to, to fulfill his... Uh, 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 a story, right? And of course he wants to uh, uh, to be failed, not to be successful. That's the uh, philosophy of the, those people who got uh, um, in control you know, it's, uh, the, the, the champions. This is the, if you're not competition, it's not uh, 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 dialogue. It's always about uh, tyranny. It's always going to be uh, dictate. And that's why it was uh, kind of... Uh, in the last minute decide to not let us do what uh, we want to do. He still want us under control. He still want us to dance under his whistle, but we are different people. Right? And uh, of course when I get back and become minister, I can do whatever I can, but uh, I pay respect. And uh, of course you know, I get all this kind of tribute for the people who make the history, but he still doesn't need us. He still uh, doesn't look at us as a... You know, not the partners as in a team. I think we cannot be good without him. Uh, 
Tehát uh, uh, we different, you know. I was 13th straight champion of Soviet Union. I never lost the championship. Uh, I left in 89. Red Army Club, club never won the championship. I mean, it's, this is the... But I won two Stanley Cup. I mean, it's... Uh, I try to, you know, it's... Uh, uh, bring everybody, you know, in the same uh, boat again, in the same team. But it's... Uh, uh, too upset, I think, so, uh, for our success. It's too, uh, 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 he still wants to control somehow our lives, but uh, it's, it's never going to happen. But again, it's, you know, it's, we, we, we worked together for 13 years, we won the lots of championships, we uh, paid a big price, but on the human side, you know, it's uh, nothing, nothing uh, it's inside. That's the, that's the, that's the. <laughs> <laughs> Still. Did you choreograph I make that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in New York, I got a good time here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I I, uh, I had a researcher in the United States and Kent and uh, Russia who you know basically we, we would give them like lists of stuff that we're we're looking for. So I had to ultimately go to go to Russia to they've got a couple archive warehouses there and they store everything film canisters basically and it's all manuals so they have everything written down in theory. So basically, yeah, I, I went to Russia and, and 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 they would basically look at. At, at these cards they had, and, I, and, and they didn't, they themselves didn't know exactly what was on a lot of these film canisters. So I would, they would take them down, maybe ten at a time, and set me up on a, on a table where you can view, you know, the film footage. And then you know, I looked through, and ultimately it became slightly impractical. But I did find a lot of amazing things, and, and um, you know, the amount of archival footage was was just. Overwhelming, to be honest. I, I probably reviewed maybe only ten percent of it. But well connected. Air Force One, KGB <laughs> guy. Yeah, you know, I can get this footage. You know, I, 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 I <laughs> yeah, my history, you know, lots of games was in, uh, disappeared. But I was impressed when you get all this stuff. You know, open up when. You have to. When? When you get all this footage? Yeah, maybe I don't know. <laughs> Um, he's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you.